This Usenix paper from our friend Matthew Green, who is a professor of cryptography at Johns Hopkins, along with four, I assume they're postdocs or grad students, um, and you can get a lot of work done if you have enough smart grad students that are I interested in a, in a project. The paper was titled, Dancing on the Lip of the Volcano, <laughs> Chosen Ciphertext Attacks on Apple iMessage. Um, and I'm just going to quote from the abstract because this gives you a sense for what Matthew Green and his group found. He, uh, their, their paper, which is, I think, 19 pages long, it opens, Apple's iMessage is one of the most widely de deployed end-to-end -end encrypted messaging protocols. Despite its broad deployment, the encryption protocols used by iMessage have never been subjected to rigorous cryptanalysis. Why? Because they're secret. And, and we'll be talking about that once we catch up on this news. In this paper... We conduct a thorough analysis of iMessage to determine the security of the protocol against a variety of attacks. Now, of course, this could have been done easily if Apple had published the protocol for verification by experts, but they didn't. Our analysis, the abstract continues, shows that iMessage has significant vulnerabilities that can be exploited by a sophisticated attacker. In particular, we outline a novel chosen plain text attack, I'm sorry, chosen ciphertext attack on Huffman compressed data, which allows retrospective decryption of some iMessage payloads in less than 218 queries. <laughs> which is nothing. The practical implementation of these attacks is that any party who gains access to iMessage ciphertexts may potentially decrypt them remotely and after the fact. We additionally describe mitigations that will prevent these attacks on the protocol without breaking backwards compatibility. Apple has deployed our mitigations in the latest iOS and OS 10 releases. Um, okay, so these guys, this work was done last year, and in November of last year, 2015, they responsibly disclosed privately to Apple what they found. So Apple w then revised their protocols in, as they said, in a backward compatible fashion, and, and we got those in March of this year in iOS 9.3 and Mac OS 10, 10.11.4. So problem was solved. You know, I mean, so when, by the time this got any light, everyone should have been updated and this wouldn't be a problem. Um, but I want to just now go over what, what they described as their high-level protocol analysis because uh, it's interesting, um, what they found under the key server and registration. And our listeners will, this will sound very familiar to people because this is what I've been complaining about from the beginning. iMessage key management uses a centralized directory server uh, they call IDS, which is operated by Apple. This server represents a single point of compromise for the iMessage system. Apple and any attacker capable of compromising the server can use this server to perform a man-in-the-middle attack and obtain complete decryption of iMessages. The current generation of iMessage clients do not provide any means for users to compare or verify the authenticity of keys received from the server. So just to pause for a second, remember, this is why, for example, I'm so bullish about Threema or, or even Signal. Both of those give you explicit key management. Now, on the one hand, most users don't want that. But if you actually care about the security of your communications, I mean, if for you security is more than just, oh, yeah, it's secure, then iMessage doesn't provide that because 
because as I've always said, they're managing the keys. And if, if a third party manages the keys and the third party can be subject to any kind of coercion or, or, you know, bad employees, then you don't actually have security. You have, you know, the feeling of security. Then they continue of more concern. Apple's new device registration mechanism does not include a robust mechanism for notifying users when new devices are registered on their account. This mechanism is triggered by an Apple push message, which in turn triggers a query to the Apple operated server. Our analysis shows that these protections are fragile. Then they have an appendix A where they implement attacks against both the key server and the new device registration process successfully. That is, they demonstrate its exploitability. Further, lack of forward secrecy, which is a, a, a property that we know is important because what that, what that does is it means that the, the, the symmetric key being used to encrypt messages is constantly changing so that if you capture the key in the future and you had, you had stored ciphertext in the past, you cannot, go, you cannot use a, a, a key captured in the future to decrypt old messages which is otherwise a problem. The, until recently, SSL, the, the pre-TLS protocol what, itself was not, did not offer uh, forward secrecy. iMessage doesn't either. iMessage does not, they write, provide any forward secrecy mechanism for transmitting messages. This is due to the fact that iMessage encryption keys are long-lived and are not replaced automatically through any form of automated process, where, for example, as we know, Signal has the key ratchet mechanism that is constantly moving keys forward. Um, this exposes users to the risk that a stolen device may be used to decrypt captured past traffic. Moreover, the use of long-term keys for encryption can increase the impact of other vulnerabilities in the system. For example, in section five, we demonstrate an active attack on iMessage encryption that exposes current iMessage users to decryption of past traffic. The risk of such attacks could, would be greatly mitigated if iMessage clients periodically generated fresh encryption keys. See section seven for pro pro proposed mitigations. Um, I'll skip over their, their discussion of the, the fact that there is no prevention for replay and reflection attacks. Um, uh, and finally, just get down to Apple's use of non-standard encryption. They write, iMessage encryption does not conform to best cryptographic practices and generally seems ad hoc. The protocol, which they diagram uh, earlier in the paper, insecurely composes a collection of secure primitives including RSA, AES, and elliptic curve DSA. Most critically, iMessage does not use a proper authenticated symmetric encryption algorithm and instead relies on a digital signature to prevent tampering. Unfortunately, it is well known that in the multi-user setting, this approach, that it is well known that in the multi-user setting, I guess we're missing a comma. This approach may not be sound. In the following sections, we show that an on-path attacker can replace the signature on a given message with that of another party. This vulnerability gives rise to a practical chosen ciphertext attack that recovers the full contents of some messages. And I had in my notes here some additional detail, but everyone gets the mat gets the idea. Essentially, what Apple did was, unfortunately, they rolled their own. They invented something they did not need to invent. Now, I want to back off from that a little bit, saying I'm not sure when iMessages protocol was put together. So some of these things may not have been around. Some of these primitives may not have been available. But we've 
does, we've covered on this podcast in the past the danger of using a signature rather than a MAC, a message authentication code, the danger of using a signature to to authenticate a message. Because if you if there's so, if there's some way for you to use a valid signature, even if it's not the original person's valid signature, but if the signature will still validate, then you can make any changes you want and 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 then sign the message with, for example, your own signature, so long as it's part of the system, it'll be accepted at the other end. And attacks like that have existed, and iMessage is vulnerable to that attack. So the takeaway is, uh, once again, the, the clear and present danger of closed protocol security design. In my opinion, it's not necessary to see the source that, that is Apple source code, but but documentation of the protocol um, would have allowed anyone who understands crypto to glance at it, and this problem would have been fixed a long time ago. What because Apple is as closed as they are for for I guess you know, corporate, commercial, proprietary reasons, they didn't, they didn't disclose the protocol. So, uh, so what that does is it hugely raises the bar of difficulty beyond the expertise of just being uh, an expert in crypto. You also then have to reverse engineer the pro an undocumented protocol from scratch. Now, there were a couple previous attempts a partial uh, reverse engineerings of iMessage. So Matt Green and his group used those, but they were incomplete. So they had to do you know, packet captures, watch this thing work, use what was what little was known publicly, and basically f reverse engineer all of how it works in order to then look at it. And and then they what they realized was what Apple had done had a lot of problems. So. So I, I can't think of a more perfect example of, of the danger of a protocol being closed, different than the source being closed, because as we know, the being able to look at the source code in theory would let you find bugs. But in practice, lots of open source code has bugs hiding in plain sight. You, you just can't see them when you look at the code. That's not the way code works today. But the protocol, that is what the code was trying to implement, I would call that the policy as opposed to the implementation. The policy should be able to withstand scrutiny. I mean, and that's, for example, that's exactly my position with Squirrel, is that uh, you know the, the Squirrel protocol is absolutely open. I talked about it on the first day that I mentioned Squirrel, and it's it's you know it's it, it, other people are implementing compatible clients and servers using the un, their understanding of the protocol because it's first of all very straightforward and very simple, but nothing hidden. And and I think I think even if we're going to have proprietary closed source solutions. There's just this is a this is a classic example of of why the protocol it that it, that it, it that 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 closed solution implements should be public.